Hey, and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, where I wanted to do a short video today just to talk about um, one of the techniques that I used in a recent video where I was studying one of these greater than killer Sudokus. So this is a Sudoku where it's a killer Sudoku, except that not all of the cages have given numbers, and some of the cages have a greater than, less than, or equal sign between them. And this gives rise to the possibility to use parity, as I call it, which is sort of the odd and even properties of numbers to make deductions. And in fact, in that video, at around, I don't know, 13 minutes in, I think, um, you can see that I, I use it to establish a fact um, that is illustrated by the top row of this killer Sudoku. So what we've got here is we've got a 14 cage on the left, got an unknown cage next to it here and then we've got two unknown cages here but we know that these two cages are equal to one another and what I was able to uh, I suppose establish is that if we add if we know that these the totals of these cages are the same we know that if we add two odd numbers together we will get an even number and if we add two even numbers together, we'll get an even number. So I knew that the total of all these four squares together was even. When I added it to another even number, obviously I'll get another even number, but I know the whole row adds to 45. So I know that this dyad here, this two cell cage, must contain exactly one odd number and one even number in order for the row to sum to the correct total. And that was actually helpful in finishing the puzzle. Now, uh, I was looking at uh, an online thread the other day, and it mentioned a couple of other situations that, where this sort of property arises, where it might not at first be obvious. So, first example here is featured in this central 3x3 three three block, where we've got a 12 cage here, a small 12 cage, and then two sort of triple cell cages that are equal to one another, but where we don't know what the uh, the total is for each of these three cages and exactly the same principle that applies here can apply here too even though these are three cages rather than two cages because because we know they're equal they're either going to be two equal even numbers or two equal odd numbers so again we know the total of them together is going to be even add two even numbers to a third even number that's even therefore we would know that this single square here would have to be odd in order to make our 45 rule work. And then, this is a slightly different one, but it's also potentially useful, where you have, here we've got a 5 cage just in the corner, and then 3 cages which are all equal to one another in the line, and this single odd cell here. Now, even though we don't know what the value is for any of these three cages, the fact that we know that they are equal to one another allows us to um, make use of another property. Um, because we know now that, in effect, once we deduct the number, once we deduct from the number 45, the number 5, and whatever this number happens to be, we must get an integer that is divisible by 3. Now, because this total here, this whatever this number is, can't be, you know, it can only be from the numbers 1 to 9. In fact, that means that there are only going to be three uh, integers divisible by 3 um, that are possible to come up with here. So let's just think about how this might work. So if we have 45 minus 5, that's 40. So obviously, this could be a 1. That would give us a 39, with these three cages being 13 each. Or we could have a 4 here, that would also work, because that would get us down to 36, which again, these three cages would add to 12 each. Or we could have a 7, and that would get us uh, to 33, with these being 11 each. So in fact, in this configuration, this cell is limited to being a 1, 4, or a 7, which certainly wouldn't occur to me when I was first studying the grid. So. I want to just bring these to your attention. I know that we do have some viewers on this who really love this sort of puzzle. I have to say I've been converted to them. Uh, I really think they are very, very elegant. And the dailykillersudoku.com 
website. You know, it has daily puzzles of very high quality. Uh, I have been told that they are machine created, which I was surprised by because they were of a high enough quality that I thought they might have been hand created. Um, but great logical tests, um, and uh, I think if you do one of those a day, you'll stave off Alzheimer's forever. So, quick video today. Uh, we'll be back with uh, more videos during the week. If you enjoy the content, please do subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic.